Of course, this is James with Velvet Addiction. Uh, first question I wanted to ask you was, of course, amid rumors of leaving Cash Money Records for Greener Pastures, you decided to resign, uh, resign and become the president of the company in process. Was it loyalty that ultimately uh, made you decide to stay? Of course, um, loyalty. Of course, loyalty. Yeah, loyalty first. Loyalty first. Um, and, you know, intelligence. Just knowledge of what my, you know, thinking about my future, knowing what I want for myself, and comparing, putting them on the scale, figuring out what could I, what could have I, what could I probably, possibly could have accomplished over here, and what can I accomplish over here, and it just came down to a weighing match. You know? Okay. Now, can you enlighten us a little bit on your own record label and who is Young Money? Young Money Entertainment. Young Money Entertainment is currency the highest bidder. Um, he's the first artist up out of um, the camp. He was formerly with the Chief, who played Master P and him. And um, his first album, his album is called Music to Fly To. It's supposed to be our first quarter next year. Hopefully, we'll be pushing for it. First thing was called My House, featuring me. And um, you got Nikki. Songs just from Ohio. She's featured on the Carter Two album, um, like two songs. Um, you got, um, and then you got Mac Main. He's, he's a um, hard lyricist from my hood. He's a real battle rapper. He came in like number nineteen, number thousand, in one of those little mm -hmm. rap battle things. And he's but he's from my hood, so I got my hands on him. And he do a lot of writing though, on the low, you know, for a lot of people. He do a lot of writing at the same time. Hmm. Now, you know, I'm from H-Town, so um, I know you did something straight out of left field by enrolling in University of Houston. What caused that decision? Uh, my, you know, when I was, when I started writing raps at 8, stopped writing them at 16. Um, that's just for the record. I started writing raps at 8, and um, I got signed at 11, and as, as a kid, as an 11-year-old child, you cannot sign the contract. Your name cannot be on there. It has to be your guardian. And it was a big step for her to take to, to sign that contract for me because we wasn't signing to Universal Records. Right? We wasn't signing to Motown, Def Jam. Mm -hmm. We were signing to Cash Money Records, right? some niggas from up the block. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was almost like, let me throw my son's childhood away and just hope on the wish and the prayer that this worked. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And she did it. So now I feel like that is done. And have a, I owe that to her school. That's nice. That's right, man. Now, some people that wouldn't know that would say that you got everything a young black man could ask for. Why even bother? What would you say to those types of people? You can never have. First of all, that's that's just it right there. I got everything a young black man can want. Can, can want. But that's not all who I am, a young black man. I'm a young man, and soon I'll be a grown man, and then I need everything a man will. So, basically, to answer that question is, you can never, I mean, want. Well, as long as I got something I want, I'm okay. I don't, that's never, I mean, there's never a necessity around here. Though. Never a necessity. I got everything I need, but as long as I want, then I'm alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey. And since H Town's like your second home, can you tell people how vital screw music is to the South? Uh, I said that screw music is to the South, meaning everything I ever put out from now on, even back then you can go and check from now on from a mixtape to a soundtrack to my album to my artist's album. It will be chopped and screwed mm -hmm. by either Paul Wall or Mike, Michael Watt, somebody in, in Houston. I got to send it to the Switch House and let it get chopped and screwed. Rest in peace, DJ Screw. Yeah, that's true. How important is freestyling the rapper's arsenal? As you consider one of the better ones in the game. Um, <coughs> it depends on what you call freestyle because I let a, I'll, I'll sit here and let a lot of rappers know when you... As far as going off the head right here, split second, I'm not so great at that as, as I mean, but that's my opinion. 
into the outside air, it may be great. But, uh, I mean, it's, like I said, it depends on what you call freestyle. Me, I call, people call what I do freestyle because I don't write. I go in the studio, I hear the beat, I tell them cut the mic on, and we come up with a song. You know what I'm saying? But, and people call that freestyle. So if that's, if that's what you call freestyle, then the technique of that is just being yourself. You know what I mean? Because that's all you can do. When you're on a pen and pad, you can, you can easily jump into another character because you're writing this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, I mean, when people write books, they can be fictional. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when, you, when you're talking, either, you just, either I'm a great liar, you know what I mean? Or I'm yeah. just talking about what I know. Yeah. I now, since you, of course, is the hottest lyricist out there, what other, other what other rappers out there do you think are really at the top of the game? Um, what you mean by top of the game? Do you mean lyrical or do you mean just blatantly at the top of the game? I'm going to say lyrically. Lyrically. Yeah. When it really makes sense. Um, lyrically, who's at the top of the game? Um, me, myself. Uh, Joel, uh, um, uh, I like um, was Rick Ross. Rick Ross. Yeah, I'll give him a hit. Rick Ross. Okay. He's is real versatile. Um, Where's he from? The booth from Miami. He's from Miami. Okay. Yeah, um, um, you got Big Killer Mike. Yeah, yeah, Killer Mike. Killer Mike. Yeah. Uh, Big Boy. Mm -hmm. but, um, um, I would say, what's that name? Common. Common, yeah. Common. Yeah. Yeah. Now, your 2004 hit, Go DJ, was a remake of an early underground hit from UNLV. Now, of course, Juvenile did set it off, but would you remake Badass Yellow Bone? Badass Yellow Bone. Yeah. Nah, because that was his name. Yeah. That was him. And that's the other boy. Yeah. And I wouldn't really make that, no. Right. Okay. And so is everything officially squashed to you, BG, and uh, Juvie? Well, you know, that, not, that never was any beef. It wasn't? Because if that was any beef, it would be problems. Yeah. So trust me, that, that was never any beef. Because we were where we at. Cash money is a mob. And beef can handle you know, it was blown out of proportion. Very uh, by the media. You know, it's family business. Yeah. And sometimes family business don't go as further than it. don't go. For, I mean, don't go. Sometimes family family business goes farther than just the family. Yeah. That's all. But and now it was beef because once it's beef, then beef gets handled. You know what I mean? 